Before continuing, we would strongly suggest watching our ratio introduction video to familiarize yourself with some of the key concepts you'd need to grasp. It is a short video to ensure you're ready to master all of the topics related to ratios in this video series. Check the description or just search Owen You Learn Ratio Introduction. Okay, now let's get into simplifying ratios. The first part. If you're looking for how to simplify decimal and fractional ratios, don't worry, our next video in the series covers this. When simplifying ratios, we are trying to find the simplest form of the relationship between different parts of a whole. Looking at this block, it represents a whole. Looking at this second block, it represents the same whole as the first block. I'll color in the blocks with the same amount of colors. For the first block, I'll break it into 10 equal parts. Four parts will represent blue and six parts will represent yellow. Looking at the second block, which still represents a whole, I'll break it into five equal parts, where two parts represent blue and three parts represent yellow. There are less equal parts, but the same amount of yellow and blue fill the same whole. We can represent this relationship between blue and yellow using ratio notation, like explained in a previous video. The two ratios are equivalent ratios, which means that they represent the same relationship between the two colors. As you may have noticed, the parts in the second ratio are half the values of the first ratio. This is a simpler version of the first ratio as there are still equal parts that represent the same amount of blue and yellow, but shown with less equal parts. All we had to do was divide both parts of the same factor that isn't one to simplify the first ratio. The factor that both parts can be divided by is two, simplifying the ratio to two to three. The ratio of the first block simplified to the ratio of the second block. This is a quick way of seeing if two ratios are equivalent to each other. If two sets of ratios simplify to the same ratio, they are equivalent to each other. What if we had 15 equal parts representing the same whole? How many blue and yellow equal parts would there be if it still had the same relationship between the blue and yellow parts? What number could we divide both values by? The final ratio is still two to three, as we divide the two values by three to simplify. Look at the circle. There are 20 red parts and 15 green parts. What is the simplified ratio to represent the same relationship between the red and green? What factor can both parts be divided by? Both values can be divided by five to give us the simplified ratio of four to three. Therefore, the ratio 20 to 15 and four to three are both equivalent ratios. Looking at this ratio, what common factor can both the values be divided by? Both have a common factor of three, therefore both numbers can be divided by three. We divide both values by three and we are left with the ratio three to four. We check our answer and see if there are any other factors both values can be divided by. One is the only whole number three and four can be divided by, so 9 to 12 is simplified to 3 to 4. What if we had the ratio 30 to 18? What is the simplest form of this ratio? We would follow the exact same process. We find a factor both the parts can be divided by. With bigger numbers, it can sometimes be a little challenging to see straight away the common factors. To see how to check if a number can be divided by the first 10 numbers, check out our video on this. Info is inside the description. It is always good to start small and work your way through. Both these values are even numbers, so we know they can both be divided by two, giving us the new ratio of 15 to nine. We check our new answer to see if the values can be divided by another factor. The two values are in the three times tables and so can be divided by three, giving us the ratio five to three. We check again to see if the new values can be divided by another factor. The only number is one. So the simplification of 30 to 18 is five to three. You don't necessarily have to simplify this way. You could have divided 30 to 18 by three first and then two after, or you could have simplified in one step by recognizing the two values can be divided by six. Regardless, the final simplified ratio is still five to three. An example could be, there are a bag of sweets in the bag, 
there are 56 gummy bears and 26 lollies. What is the ratio of gummy bears to lollies in its simplest form? First, we write the ratio based on the order the question presents the items in the bag. Gummy bears was said first, followed by lollies, therefore the ratio must be written as 56 to 28. What factor can both values be divided by? They both end in even numbers, so we know they can both be divided by 2 to give us 28 to 14. We check again to see if we can find another factor. The values can be divided by 2 again to give us the new ratio of 14 to 7. Checking again, the values can be divided by 7 to give us the ratio 2 to 1. These values have no more common factors except for 1. Could you spot a larger number 58 and 28 could be divided by? The largest factor would be 28, which would simplify in one step. However, they both could have been divided by 14, then 2 after. As long as you find factors, the order of the numbers doesn't necessarily matter when simplifying. There could be questions that have 3 or more values in a ratio, such as 8 to 20 to 4, or 30 to 60 to 15. The same process applies. For each part, we find common factors of all the values and keep going until there are no more common factors of the values in the ratio. Once again, the way the ratios have been divided are not fixed. They could be simplified in different orders or with a larger factor. If all the values can't be divided by the same value, then you can't simplify any further. This would be the simplest ratio. So to summarize, when simplifying ratios, you would need to first find a common factor of all the parts in the ratio and proceed to divide the parts by that number. You repeat the process to see if there are any other common factors. If there are, continue to divide until the only common factor is one. Pause and try these questions yourself. If you like the series, be sure to comment, like and subscribe to be kept updated on new in-depth videos and most importantly, share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. Don't see a topic you need help with? Suggest a topic in the comment section. We do read all the comments. Thanks again for watching and for learning. Peace.